Hey guys, and welcome back to Studio One with me, Gregor. I love working with samples and audio loop content because it's so easy with drag and drop in Studio One to get a satisfying result. Unfortunately, this is also kind of an instant gratification model that many beat makers follow every day. So eventually you will end up sounding like everybody else who goes with the same approach. But what if you find that audio loop that's really exactly what you want almost and you just wish you could remix that easily to make it uniquely your own. Well for that application Studio One offers something truly amazing, the pattern mode. And I've shown this in a couple of my workshops and presentations before but I never covered it in a video. This is one of my favorite tricks uh, with Impact XT and pattern mode in Studio One. So I hope you enjoy. So I have a pretty basic audio loop here but I just really like the way it sounds. And I just like to remix it in a way that I couldn't do with classic audio editing. Now there's several ways that we can achieve that, but my favorite method I want to show you today. So first of all, we need an instance of Impact XT, a powerful drum sampler that we have available in Studio One. So I just go to the instrument section here of my browser, I select Impact XT and I drag that into the next available free song space. Now this is an empty instance of Impact XT if you also want that, but yours isn't empty when opening up, you could just go to the empty kit preset here and then click on this icon to create a default preset file from that. And once you save this as a default preset, Impact XT would always open up with an empty kit just in case that you want to do this more often. Okay, so Impact has been added to our song and now we have to get this audio loop on one or multiple paths of impact. Now, when I just do this in a regular way, then I could just drag and now I have the entire thing here on this first Impact XT path, but that's not exactly what I want. I would like to have different steps so that I can play it across the uh, atom, for instance. Now, to do that, I could also grab this audio loop and then before I let go, I hold down Shift, this would slice up the audio loop on each transient that Studio One detects and then spread that across the pads available. So now I would have 10 pads available for playing. So that's certainly closer to what I want to have, but um, I still want it to be a bit more finely selected. I don't want to necessarily slice at every transient. Maybe I want to make a very specific selection of samples. Then that's also possible. I'm just going to clear the entire bank here with a right click. And after I've done that, I can just go to the audio bend menu right here and analyze this material. Now I set the threshold can also choose between standard and sensitive, which will impact how many of the transients, these beats here are going to be detected. Each one that's being detected gets its own blue stripe here that we can then slice and import as a separate sample in Impact XT. And of course, we can also go here to the bend tool to determine exactly where we want the sample to stop and the next sample to start. You can also with this tool while you add it, double click to remove one. You can use option and drag to remove several or uh, move them around. That's also possible. And this is by far the easiest way to manage sample import in Impact XT. I would not recommend to try importing the entire sample in Impact first and then trying to copy paste it across the paths that can be a bit more convoluted. So definitely try out my version with the bend markers where you add a bend marker for every sample start and end point. And once you're done, once you have a blue bend marker line for each of these samples start and end points, that's when you can go to right click audio and the magical command split at bend markers. This will split the audio loop up at the exact points that we specified and spread it across the paths, which makes it so that you get exactly the samples with the exact durations that we have set. To do this, we simply select all of the events and then drag and drop as before onto Impact XT while holding down Shift. And this will spread the samples across multiple paths. Now I have eight different samples here that I can work with. Okay, now I want to show you how I like to work with audio loops and pattern. This is especially effective if you have one bar of loop in a 4-4 grid, which is most of electronic music anyway. And when you're already pretty happy with the loop as it is, you just want to remix it a little bit. So let's just uh, glue this 
audio part together again by simply deleting all of the chops that we made and simply dragging it back out. And I'm also going to clear once again the banks here in Impact XT. Okay, now I want to set my grid to 1 16th, which is already the case. And then I want to split this event, this audio loop at the grid. And uh, what that does, if you go to right click event split at grid, is that it's going to do a cut after every 16th note. Why we want to do that, you're going to see in just a moment. Now we open up Impact XT again and simply drag and drop onto the first pad while holding down Shift. This is going to spread this entire audio loop evenly across 16 pads at a 16th note quantization. So essentially what we're getting here is the entire loop spread across 16 pads that I could play back here on the Atom. Obviously, that is not what I want to do. Otherwise, I could have just kept the original. But what I can do now is actually go ahead and remove the original audio track, then create another pattern by holding down Option on the Mac or Alt on Windows and double clicking, and then setting a step for the first sound on the first step, for the second sound on the second step, and so forth until I get this kind of staircase, this downward staircase that you can see right here. And if I play that back, it's going to sound exactly like the original, right? But now I'm in the realm of pattern. Now I can do things that are completely impossible to do by simply applying the classic audio editing workflow tricks. For example, what I can do is add a couple more kick drum samples. Like so. Or I can set a probability for each of the kicks and setting that to only 50% by holding down shift. I just set that to 50% for both of these notes. So sometimes there's no kick at all. And sometimes there's a double kick. can also add additional steps. And you can see how this very quickly turns into something entirely different. This gets even more crazy when you work with repeats. Basically a re-trigger for every step. And you start to understand now probably how quickly you can turn this audio loop that you like, but that probably a lot of other musicians have in their factory library as well, into something that's truly and uniquely your own using remixing methods in pattern mode that are not available in classic audio editing. I can only encourage you to try this out for yourself. I've built an entire library of audio loops this way that are entirely my own and that are still completely reversible, changeable, because yeah, I saved them in the pattern format and as soon as I import them back into Studio One, they are in their original pattern mode form and I can change everything about them. This is the so-called music loop standard that makes this possible in Studio One. If you want to learn more about that, I'm going to link this video in the end title card here where you can learn more about it. And thank you for watching.